Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and it's time to start sucking leaves and as I said before I bought a cyclone rake. I did use it a little bit yesterday at my house and um, I haven't used it at the in-laws house yet because I can't get his Ingrisol to start and run right. Uh, we both have Ingrisol garden tractors and that's what I'm going to pull it with. So I took some stuff over to his house yesterday, a bunch of tools and I took my leak down tester and I took my compression gauge. I said well I'll throw that on and check the compression first. Well I cranked it over a few times and this baby came up to 50 pounds. That's Well that's why it's not running and I have no compression. So I hit the little button and zeroed out the gauge and I hit it again and I let it crank over five or six times and it went up to 50 pounds as it was cranking then all of a sudden it shot up to 140 pounds compression so I shut the key off the little button did it again 140 pounds compression I said okay something's something's weird so I couldn't get it to run. I originally thought it was a fuel pump because I put one of them on a year and a half ago, uh, both of us, father-in-law and me, just before he passed. And of course we bought an aftermarket one from Amazon and it, it doesn't work quite well. Uh, to get it started at first, you have to put your hand over the end of the carburetor to really choke it before it'll start. Then after you know it warms up the next day or two it might start. Or you might have to take the air breather off and choke it out again to get it to going. So I eliminated the fuel pump. I grabbed a auxiliary gas tank I have out of a Craftsman machine with a hose on it. Here's this carburetor and I stuck the hose on here and, and I set the tank up on top of the tractor hit the key and it started and started running. But then it started choking out again and it killed the engine. So I'm, I'm kind of sitting there scratching my head and all of a sudden <coughs> I see gas coming out of the carburetor dripping down on the floor. And so, okay, the needle valve isn't working. So I pulled the carburetor off and I've had a lot of guys <coughs> send me emails and said, Jim, there's something wrong with my snapper. It runs wide open when I um, have the engine running. It just all of a sudden started running wide open. <coughs> well, this one, this is your choke butterfly over here. And this uh, butterfly on the back side is for your RPMs. And I always tell them, look through your carburetor and see if you can see that butterfly. You can see this one opening and closing. Well, look at this one and tell me what you see missing. Yeah. Now this has happened before. Uh, the last time it happened, both screws fell out and got sucked into the engine. And one screw was embedded <laughs> in the top of the piston. And the other screw, I can't remember where we found that. That was laying over by the valves, I think. Well, I think that's what my compression problem is. Is that screw is getting under the valve and then popping out and... So I got to pull the top of the engine off. I'll do that online. But this we're going to put in our ultrasonic cleaner and try to clean it up a little bit. Uh, the inside of the float bowl actually looks pretty darn good. It's got a little dirt here and there in there. But it's not bad, probably because we tore this apart about a year and a half ago and 
he fixed them, replaced them two screws. Now we're going to pull this apart a little bit. It does now, right now, it's closed. The little needle valve is in there. I can blow air right through. And I, I can also put a vacuum to it, and there is no vacuum. You can pull air both ways past that valve. So that's one problem we've got. So we're going to pull that out of there. And this is old school. This is an old tractor, and it does not have, if it'll stop wiggling, it does not have a rubber tip. As a solid steel one. And I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of crud down in there. That's probably why it's not sealing up. But we're going to throw this in the cleaner and see what happens. I don't know if I can get you over there and you can see this thing working. be kind of nice if you could see right down inside of this thing. We're going to take the cover off. I got it heating up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see anything. This this solution's pretty dirty. You can't see much, but we're going to boil that baby in there for, I don't know, a good half hour. Um, I don't think it's ever been cleaned out. I think he rebuilt it once, and we were looking through his files. They got everything filed. We were looking through his files, and we found a complete carburetor repair kit. So I'm going to try just putting the new seat and needle in it. And if that still has problems, then I'll, have, I'll pull it back off and uh, rebuild the whole carburetor. I, I hate to waste any of them parts in case these are okay and it'll keep running because I don't know if I can get parts for this engine anymore. And I'm hoping that I can get a new head gasket if I ruin that one when I pull the head off. But i got to find that screw. Hopefully it blew right through the exhaust valve and it'll just rattle around inside the muffler with maybe the other one. So I guess uh, I get a chance. I'm going to run over there and tear that engine apart and I'll try to film it. Okay, we're going to try to take this thing apart, and I have it speeded up two times, which probably isn't fast enough, but it's as fast as this will let me go. We're going to try to get the cover off the top of the engine and the cover off the muffler so I can remove it. I'm pretty sure that's where my screws are. I've never worked on this machine before, 
<clears throat> my father-in-law always did his own work, and he very, very seldom ever asked for help. My Ingersoll it has a 16-horse Owens engine. This is a 14-horse Kohler. Mine is a twin-cylinder opposed engine. And it runs so smooth, it's unbelievable what the difference is between that and a V twin engine. Father-in-law made the comment a couple times, I sure wish I had your engine on my machine. <clears throat> the only option you had back when this machine was sold in the mid to early 90s was a Kohler or a Vanguard Briggs & Stratton. The Vanguards were just coming out on the market and he wasn't too sure he wanted one of those seeing the reputation that a Kohler engine has. I'm having a little trouble trying to figure out how that stupid metal box comes apart and I'm not really sure why it's even on there. I know the engine sucks air through the little square openings underneath that oil tank and there's one on the other side under the battery that allows air to flow through the oil cooler through the engine across the muffler and out the front. The only problem with that is it blows so much air out the front if the leaves are really dry you have to chase them around the yard. You can see my torpedo heater running off to the upper left hand corner. I just bought that and that is so much nicer than the fuel oil one I have. It's just it doesn't stink. It don't make as much noise as the fuel oil one does, although it is a little noisy. But it's just a lot cleaner, and uh, you can adjust the amount of heat coming out of it. I got that at Menards, and it really works nice. <clears throat> I guess at some point I wish I would have watched my father-in-law take this apart the first time. <laughs> Finally, there's the head. Got some crap on it. Blow that off. I don't really think it's from mice. I think it's from uh, just dirt getting up in there when it's running. As you can see, the side openings on the machine, there's supposed to be a metal panel there with a bunch of quarter-inch holes in it. Now, I don't know why he took his off. That just sucks in leaves and everything else. <laughs> These, to me, didn't seem like they were real tight. But after I put the head back on and tightened it up with that same wrench, I went home and got my torque wrench, and they said 28 to 30 pounds torque. I checked them all with my torque wrench, and they were actually a little tighter than 30 pounds. These are awesome tractors. I just love mine. Oh. Uh -huh.
more bulk. Now, as normal, not all the washers came out with the bolts. And my furnace just kicked on. Now, I'm going to try to turn the engine over to get the piston up to top dead center so I can clean it. But by pulling on the belt, which I'm doing now, the electric clutch is not kicked on, so it's not doing anything. So we'll just kick the clutch on. There we go. And we'll shut her back off. Still trying to figure out how that stupid box comes apart. Okay, I finally got that guard off of the muffler, and I got the muffler off, as you can see. But uh, if you can hear this, I think that's my screw, or one of the first ones that came off. Yep, that's my screw. Now. I don't know if that's the original one or the one that I'm just trying to fix now. Because this has happened before. Something else in there. Well, it's going to be hard to see, but this is part. Let me tip you down. That's part of another screw. It looks like the, when it went through, it looks like maybe the valve broke it in half and who knows where the other part is. As hot and burned up as that little screw is, I don't know if I want a chance of reusing it. I think I'm going to have to make a trip to the hardware and buy a new screw. I don't hear anything else rattling around in there. But the issue I have now is I would like to look up in there where that spring is on the exhaust valve. Let me see if I can get that taken apart, and then I'll be back. Okay, I got the piston cleaned up, or I should say the piston and the top of the valves, and I got the bottom of the head cleaned up. I went home and got my endoscope and uh, my die grinder and wire wheels and cleaned everything up. I know my father-in-law was real big on pulling the heads once in a while and cleaning the carbon off. He said it made them start and run better. I don't know, but <laughs> got something here I want to show you. This is the intake valve. This is the exhaust. See all the impact marks? Every time it, the exhaust valve open it blew the crap over on top of the valve and some of it went under the valve and into the muffler. I did find a screw and a broken screw. But this is on top of the piston. 
That was probably the screw that broke in half was when the piston came up and crushed it, the head would have stuck up higher than the threaded shank and it probably snapped the head off. Maybe he found the head last time, I don't know. But I remember him saying that, so that was from the first time the screws came out of the butterfly. This time I will lock tight them in place. The gasket came off, I would say perfect. There's nothing wrong with that and I can see. I'll be putting that one back on. <clears throat> I have to run over to the hardware store and try to find one of them little screws. I'm guessing it's a 440 because I have a thread checker that goes down to six and the screw drops right in that. So I'll take the little uh, shaft for the butterfly with me because once you take the butterfly off, the shaft pulls right out of the top of the carburetor. So I make sure I get the right screws. Come back here and put this thing back together and see if it runs any better than what it did. <coughs> I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, because I need this machine to do this yard with my cyclone rig. Uh, these machines <coughs> never really did a good job sucking leaves. Nothing like a snapper does. A snapper will pick up anything you run over. Walnuts, pine cones, sticks, twigs. These will not. I can drive this right down my gravel driveway and suck the leaves up. You wouldn't dare do that with a snapper. With that cyclone rake on here, it changes things 500%. You can drive over with this setup and that bagger, you can drive over the yard two or three times to get every leaf. Not with that cyclone rake on there. It picks up one swipe, it picks everything up. If the leaves get too deep, I found you just raise the deck all the way up, it still bags. <laughs> it's amazing how much extra vacuum that thing puts on that mower deck. And it, it's amazing how well that thing works. I'm just so impressed with it. <coughs> there is one thing I would like them to change on it, and I'm going to get a hold of them and talk to them about that and uh, see what they can come up with. <coughs> because I think this winter I'm going to pull mine apart and I'm going to do it to mine. But for right now, we're going to run over to the hardware store and I'll be back. Hang on. Well, let's try to put this thing back together now. <clears throat> Went to the hardware and got screws for the carburetor. Got the butterfly fixed. I Loctited it this time and we'll see what happens. Let me plug in my microphone and tip you down. This is a Ingersoll garden tractor and it has a 14 horse Kohler engine on it.
wrong spot. Right spot, wrong way around. Well, didn't look like it fit that way. It's the way I thought it was. <clears throat> Well, at least it stopped snowing outside. Okay, what did I do with my oil? Oh, gosh. Clear across the room. See if that helps that slide on there.
I think Quite a contraption just to cover up the muffler. There's one down here somewhere. that They certainly don't make this easy.
got to go look up the torque specifications for them head bolts. And then all I got to do is I'm going to wait <clears throat> 24 hours for the Loctite I put on the screws on the butterfly to set up before I start this thing. I can put the carburetor on, but I don't want to run any fuel through it until I'm sure that stuff is set up good. So I guess that's it for now. Okay, now I got the rest of that cowling around the, the muffler back together, I believe. I think I have one more screw on the other side. But now we're going to stick the carburetor on. And that can be a job in itself. The screws are, the carburetor is, I guess, small or large, and the bolt heads are too big to get a socket on them to tighten them up. So it's quite a challenge to get this thing in here. The one spot's so bad, he put a screwdriver slot in it so you, you can at least screw it in most of the way. I wish he would have done that to the other one. Oops, I forgot. Got to put the choke rod in first. At least I didn't get it on all the way. Now this one you got to get in here. I don't know if I can get this on it or not. Well, maybe. Oh, that worked pretty good. head is so close you can't get a closed end on it. You have to try to use this open end best you can. Now I've got I stole one of the clamps when I was trying the uh, gravity feed tank that led me to this whole carburetor problem. Oh, can't get my finger in there. This linky John. Now, I gotta let, I wanna let the Loctite set up good for at least 24 hours before I mess with it. So I think I'll put. Well, maybe I'll leave this off because I may have to put my hand over it to choke it good so it'll start because there's no gas in it. And it doesn't, to me, this fuel pump doesn't pump out enough fuel. I'll just make sure I got everything tight. And put the other bolts back in. Let's see. 
goes over here. the ground wire back on. I guess I could turn that a little bit so you could see something. Had the spark plug route. Let's make sure I got that tight. tighten all these up. I put most of them just loose until I got everything back together. I'm going to check this, shake this engine a little, check them motor mounts. They have a tendency of ripping out. But, don't look bad. Now if we can get the hood back on. This is always an issue. turn this so the hole lines up once I get it in there. And 
we've got a counter key we've got to shove in there. I don't know how that would ever work out on its own. And plug in the headlights. Hopefully, that's done. <coughs> Pick all this crap up, and tomorrow night, about this time, we'll come over and see if this bad boy starts. Well, we're back at it. It's been 24 hours since I put Loctite on them little screws. Let's see if it starts. I know it's going to crank for a while because the carburetor is completely dry. Um... I'm just hoping it runs and it has some power this time. So let's see what happens. Well, hallelujah, <laughs> it runs. <clears throat> now we'll see how it, before when I kicked the mower deck on, the engine would quit. It didn't have enough power to get the deck running. I kicked the deck off and on a few times. Seems to be running great. <clears throat> you can see breath because it's cold. I'm in Michigan. This is October 31st, Halloween. They've canceled it in about four counties around us. We got six to seven inches of wet, slushy snow. I don't think I ever remember having snow on Halloween. <laughs> if this is any indication of what this winter is going to be like... I'm glad I picked this up last year. <clears throat> That's a 32, 30, 30 inch 
Cub Cadet blower. I used it a little bit last year, not much. That's an awesome machine. <clears throat> You're not stopping that. I don't care what you drive through. So, if the snow ever melts, <laughs> we'll see how that thing works. But I guess this is it. So, this, this segment is going to be a little short, but the rest of the video, I imagine, is pretty long. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and I'll talk to you soon. So long.